We have talked about this that when cells are damaged, they go through a process called apoptosis or programmed cell death. It is a very important uh, process which eliminates cells which are not working properly. So we are going to look at this process and see what happens if this process stops working and how that may result into cancer. I would like to start out by telling you that billions of cells, especially bone cells living in the bone, die in healthy humans. In adult cell death, exactly in adults, cell death exactly balances cell division in most tissue. During development, cell death is a very important phenomenon. For example, the nerve cells, they send out axons to target cells. And cell death matches the number of nerve cells to the number of the target cells. So the target cells will secrete this particular survivor factor and the axons that don't make it to the target cells will go through apoptosis because these cells will not be able to perform their function. We don't need these cells. So these cells go through apoptosis. Additionally, I would like to mention that initially when we start out, we have webbing between our fingers. Here, here this is a mouse embryo, but also humans have this web. And the cells that reside between the fingers, they go through apoptosis, so our digits will be able to separate. Additionally, I would like to mention that we have a little tail also, even human beings, during certain stage of embryonic development, which we get rid of during the process. And that also, apoptosis also plays a role in that. So let's look at the overview of apoptosis process. There can be apoptosis we have talked about can be caused by, for example, extrinsic factors like cytotoxic T cells, which release granzyme B, which come in through the cells when the cell wall of the, the target cell is punctured. We have also talked about FAS and FAS ligands. The cytoplasmic domain assembles proteins, which are called capsaices, and once a capsaic is activated, it basically results in apoptosis. Withdrawal of growth factors can also result in apoptosis. Radiation, toxic elements, and free radicals, they can also cause apoptosis. So also there are intrinsic pathways. These are extrinsic pathways, these ones. So there are also intrinsic pathways. So if cell has is unable to perform normally or if there's a damage in the cell, the mitochondria releases cytochrome C, which is present in the inner membrane, outer surface of the inner membrane. And once the cytochrome C is released, it can also result in activation of capsaices. All capsaices ultimately result in activation of executional capsaices, which call, cause ultimately apoptosis. We'll see the, how capsaices work, but here we, I want to mention a few more things. So P53 can also become activated if there is a cell damage, and it can also activate some capsaices causing the apoptosis. In apoptosis, basically all the macromolecules of the cell are degraded. They are bundled up in vesicles. These vesicles have these receptors or these proteins sticking out, which basically act as ligands for phagocytic cells. These phagocytic cells bind these vesicles, which are being released by the cell which is dying or apoptotic cell. And through receptor mediated endocytosis, they will engulf these little vesicles and degrade them. So this is the basically overview of apoptosis. Now let's look at how the capsaices are activated. So there are two mechanisms for activation of capsaices that we have already mentioned when we were talking about T cells. Now let's look at them in more detail. One is T cell killer lymphocyte expressing FAS ligand, which binds FAS protein on the surface of the target cell. This binding causes a conformational change in the cytoplasmic domain of FAS protein that results in binding of a particular adapter to the cytoplasmic domain of the FAST protein. This adapter recruits a capsaic called procapsaic 8. Capsaic, as I've mentioned earlier, are weakly proteolytic. When 
bunch of capsaices eight accumulate they cleave each other off resulting in active capsaices eight here is activated capsaices eight once the capsaices eight is activated it can activate other capsaices like we saw in signaling system there's a cascade which ultimately results in cell death or apoptosis activation of apoptosis from inside the cell as i mentioned earlier cytochrome c is released cytochrome c once this blue dot is released it can bind adapter proteins which is shown here in green this binding takes place these molecules aggregate and procapsaic 9 binds to these and once the procapsaic 9 binds them and it accumulates the same thing happens which we saw in case of fast ligand and fast protein these proteins are also mildly proteolytic when they accumulate they cleave each other off and we have activated capsaic 9 and which can result into again apoptosis so now let's look at the capsaic cascade how that works so as we have said there is a procapsaic which when accumulates when procapsaics are in vicinity of each other they cleave each other off and either that can happen or another capsaic can cleave a procapsaic resulting in a large subunit and a small subunit these two come together and the pro domain or the inhibitory domain is lost and now our active capsaic is ready for its action which is degradation of macromolecules now let's see how the capsaic cascade works so one molecule of capsaic x gets activated whatever that is once it is activated it will go and cleave other molecules of and a different type of capsaic let's for example say these are capsaic y so capsaic x will cleave and activate many molecules of capsaic y which can for example degrade cytosolic proteins mentioned here these capsaic y will also act on another type of capsaic let's say this is capsaic z so capsaic y will not only degrade cytosolic proteins it will also activate capsaic z molecules and once they are activated capsaic z molecules for example can cleave nuclear laminin so basically end result is one as we saw in signaling process signaling cascade one molecule gets activated there is signal amplification we saw in signaling systems so here you can think of it as a signal amplification process one molecule is activating several other those several molecules will activate several 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 more other molecules this is a basically a cascade phenomena so now i would like to show you what happens with mitochondria so when the cells suffer a damage due to dna damage p53 accumulates p53 as we have seen is a transcription factor it can result in formation or transcription and translation of other molecules for example bax molecule mentioned right here bax can bind another molecule called bcl2 bcl2 is a very important molecule it is holding on to several pro apoptotic molecules and preventing them from doing their job so bcl2 here is an anti apoptotic molecule and the pro apoptotic molecule for example is bax is a pro apoptotic molecule once b53 is able to bind dna and result in transcription of other molecules they can bind bcl2 and in that process bax which is generally bound to bcl2 is released and it will form little holes in the outer membrane of mitochondria which will result in release of cytochrome c cytochrome c x on capsaic 9 capsaic 9 as we saw in capsaic cascade can activate capsaic 3 and this is basically the executional capsaic that will start destroying and chewing up the larger macromolecules the alternative pathway we have already talked about adapter proteins can result in coming together of several capsaic 8 molecules they can also activate capsaic 3 so this is basically the mechanism for apoptosis we have talked about different ways cells can undergo apoptosis and role of p53 protein so 
apoptosis is basically a very important process dysregulation of this process can also result in neoplastic transformation or cancer